Okay, folks, quick intro here. I'm going to tell you right now that um, for the last week I haven't worked out. Um, I had some sciatica pain. Uh, I had surgery on my back about five years ago to solve the problem. And out of the blue, I wake up after five years of no pain with really great sciatica pain the weekend before Christmas. So it's been about a week and a few days since the last time I worked out. I did just do the Bowflex fitness test a little bit ago. Um, loaded myself up with some turmeric for inflammation and a few Advil for the pain. And uh, I feel that working out is so important that you even need to do it when you're in pain. So um, bear with me on this one. Uh, this video is actually part of another video that I'm working on, been working on for a while now. The last time I recorded it, I forgot to record the uh, laptop or the uh, tablet screen. So uh, a couple things I'm going to do here. I wear a heart rate monitor. It's a Polar H10. It goes with my Polar Vantage watch. Um, I see a lot of people talking about it not syncing or having troubles getting their heart rate monitor to sync with the Bowflex. And the simplest way to fix that is to always start wearing the heart rate monitor and the Bowflex is unplugged. I don't know if you can see that. Here's the plug for the Bowflex, the wall outlet's right there. So the way that I guarantee that my heart rate monitor will sync every single time is I start with it unplugged. I plug it in while holding my tablet. I then walk around and stand on the Bowflex while it's going through its startup mode. I wait until it's actually ready before I ever even turn my tablet on. So we'll wait for that to happen. It's on starting right now. Loading. Sound done. All the brightness tests, all the lights just come on. Now it says max trainer. So once it says that, I go ahead, it says get ready. So now we're at the startup screen. I go ahead and open up the Journey app. I make sure that I'm connected to the machine. And then I go to my workouts. Now I've got a 14 minute workout plan for this. just because it's a shorter video. Okay, I need to go ahead and also do my screen record and hopefully this time it actually records. Screen recorder is now on. So now I'm gonna go into my both or on my Polar Watch and start my training. My watch has a 30 second countdown that I wait until I get to about five seconds and then I press start. What that does is it gives me time to get everything set up on the tablet, um, gives me time to prepare myself. So I'm at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. I go ahead and press start on the Bowflex. And my workout starts. I'm increasing my resistance. I'm at nine right now. It feels pretty good on the legs. I'm at 10. Still feels pretty good. I'm gonna go to 11. All right, now when it, when it goes into the cool down, I don't change or lower the resistance. I just leave it the same. You can see my heart rate's at 132, 133. One thing about heart rate, um, 
you should never exceed your maximum heart rate and you find that by taking 220 and subtract your age so whatever that value is you never want to exceed that So we're at 21 seconds of the recovery, cool down. You should always breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Still feels a little easy for me at 11 on resistance. Before the injury, I'd been working out at 13. <laughs> Breathe in through your nose, deep breaths, out through your mouth. Now I've done interval training for a long time. Prior to the Bowflex, I used an elliptical. I did intervals on it too. A lot of people have asked me how to get the um, target to increase on the Bowflex. And basically there's two ways to do that. You can either do the fitness test often and it will adjust your target range and recovery based on that. And another way that you can do it is you can just greatly exceed the target range over a period of days and it will finally increase it from that too. My target range was a little bit higher. Um, and I guess just where I haven't worked out for over a week, it, it lowered it some. So what I mean by working out above the target range, on the next one I'll do that. The recovery, you don't actually have to stay in the blue, just if you're at a high level of resistance, sometimes that's hard to do. But uh, just try to get it close. Your resistance level I've kind of explained it to people that you increase it until it feels like you're maybe walking upstairs while carrying a load of laundry or have a backpack on with some weight. You don't want it to be easy all the time because you're never going to make any progress. I try to make the resistance level so that I'm hitting zone 5 of my heart rate zone um, and I'll go over intervals after the next recovery or after the next uh, target. Remember I'm going to exceed this greatly so here we go. I sure got the heart rate up and the legs burning.
But if you do that consistently over a period of time, it'll move that red range higher for you. Whew. All right, heart rate intervals. Polar uses a thing called uh, heart rate intervals or heart rate zones. There are five zones. In each zone that um, you target um, has a different effect on your workouts. And I'll leave a link in the description what I'm talking about to how they explain it. Whew. Another tip, if you're doing this to lose weight, you want to increase the, the amount of protein that you consume. And if you don't want a calorie count, all the food you eat, an easy way to do it is to just do protein shakes. So you want to target if you're going to do the protein shakes between one and one and a half times your body weight in grams of protein so as an example and I'm going to use the easy number because doing math while working out is too hard if you weighed a hundred pounds you would want to consume between 100 and 150 grams of protein every day and since protein shakes are often in 30 60 wow, grams calories gone. that means you would drink two protein shakes a day at 60 grams each Now there's a side effect of consuming a lot of protein and don't matter if you're male or female, don't matter what your age is, um, you are going to get very gaseous. I guess that would be a term to use. If you're married and your partner isn't working out also on a high protein diet, they're probably going to get aggravated with you. Um, TMI maybe for YouTube, but I'm just going to be honest with you. For the first few weeks of a high protein diet, your farts will absolutely stink. Methane gas will be the smell. <laughs> I can assure you that maybe three or four weeks in, it finally subsides. But those first couple of weeks, are uh, really fun.
Now another question I get asked a lot is why I don't do all my workouts on YouTube. I've thought about it, but to be honest with you, the reason I don't do it is because I generally have my MP3 player playing over Bluetooth and a Bluetooth speaker over there. And it's, uh, it's a lot easier to work out if you have music. So, knowing I was going to record this without music, what I did, and the reason why I keep touching my phone, is I put a list of topics I should discuss based on questions people have asked me. And uh, it's not the same as having music, though. <laughs> it's actually very hard to talk when your heart rate's at 160 beats per minute and you're working out. So another thing you want to do often is vary your workouts. You should increase the resistance levels and the time often. Never do the same workout two or three days in a row. Always change it up. All right, so this is the last cool down and the workout's over. So I covered the very your workouts. I covered the protein. Um, you wanna do the fitness test at least once a week. Um, it's within the Journey app. Lasts about eight to 10 minutes. They guide you through it. You wanna increase your time and resistance. Vary your workouts. Um, every week I try to increase the resistance level by one full point. So um, I've worked out as high as up to 18 on this. And because I was working out previously at 13 and it's been like a little over a week since I worked out last, I reduced it down to 11. I went over the maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus your age. And as an example, if you're 20 years old, you would never want to exceed your maximum heart rate of 200, 220 minus 20, for extended periods of time. You can actually cause um, heart arrhythmia problems if you do that. So now the workout's over. I also covered, um, you know, doing intervals and why the HRM. And I'm gonna do more of the YHRM when I edit this. And I'll list links to Polar. One thing I didn't cover is why I chose Polar. This is the fourth Polar watch that I've owned over the years. Um, I started with Polar because Polar is the company that invented heart rate monitors for fitness way back in the 1980s. So all these other companies, Fitbit, Garmin, everybody else, they're basically using Polar's technology with their own um, algorithms to get your heart rate. But Polar's were the original inventors of heart rate monitor monitoring. They did it for the um, Olympic team during training. And then uh, that's kind of why I went with them because they invented it. Their heart rate monitors are super accurate. They last a long time and uh it's just a great company mm, i've never i've only ever had one issue with a polar product i've now owned three or four chest straps four watches multiple accessories stride sensors that sort of thing um, at one time i did have problems with one of my hurry sensors um, they asked me to send it back to them they replaced it for free under warranty i think i was even like a month out of warranty but they replace it for free, no questions asked, just send it back to them. I think I might have had to pay, well of course I had to pay shipping to them. Can't remember if I had to pay the sh return shipping or not, but either way they covered the product. Um, what it was, was that the heart rate monitor had gotten some moisture or something in it 
And even though I left it with the battery cover off and the battery out of it, it didn't seem to fix the problem. And basically they just asked me to send the strap, strap in the monitor itself back. Of course, when it come back, it was a different serial number, which means they just sent me another one. Um, I don't really know what the issue was, but you know, out of warranty, they still covered it. Now, I don't know if they'll do that for everybody. I'm not affiliated with Polar. I don't work for Polar. I don't get any kind of commission for recommending Polar. I'm only recommending them because they've been excellent for me. So uh, you can try that yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this screen record stuff. I'll also show you what the Polar Watch shows after the workout. So I'll go through that and kind of show you how I can overlay one over top of the other one because I timed their work and rest periods. And uh, that should complete this video. If you've got any questions, ask. Um, did I go over why I don't? Okay, so in case I forgot to go over it because for some reason it's lingering in my mind, I don't upload my workout videos like every time I do them for the simple reason that I work out with music. And if you upload videos with music in the background, YouTube says, nope, you're not allowed to do that because that's copyright infringement, blah, 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 blah. So if I upload videos, um, I did one that had some background music. They left the video there, but they demonetize it, which don't matter to me because I don't have enough subscribers um, to actually get money off of these. But if you want to, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I do a little bit of everything. I have a homestead with uh, chickens, rabbits, bees, goats. Um, I do a lot of gardening. I have an orchard where I have over 60 fruit trees that I planted in the last five years. And I also am pretty big into fitness. This is my fitness room. I think I've covered it in previous videos. I basically have a squat rack with about 450 pounds of weights. So I do like a five by five workouts. It's called five by five weightlifting. And then I use the Bowflex for my cardio. I also have an older Gold's Gym recumbent cycling bike. And I also have a Gold's Gym weightlifting thing. I should have got rid of it a long time ago. It kind of sucks, but I do use one workout on that, and that's the rowing feature. So I keep it around just for that because it would be expensive to replace it with another rowing thing. I'm seriously thinking about getting rid of the recumbent bike and the Gold's Gym uh, weight thing and getting either a Bowflex or Nordic Track um, treadmill one of the newer ones that have the really extreme inclines because I do a lot of long distance hiking. So that's another topic you'll see about on my channel a lot is hiking.